Hi YouTube, today I'm going to be discussing how you make homemade beef jerky. Now homemade beef jerky is a passion of mine. One, because I can save a ton of money making my own versus purchasing at the grocery store. A typical three ounce bag of beef jerky costs anywhere from five to seven dollars or more depending on the maker. And you never really know what ingredients are in there. Uh, with mine, it's a real simple recipe. I'm going to guide you through it. We're going to talk about the ingredients. We're going to talk about the beef that I use. Uh, I use a Nesco food dehydrator, the professional model. It has a temperature control and it also has an electric fan in there. So typically when I make beef jerky, and I usually make about five pounds at a time, um, it runs me anywhere between eight and nine hour dry time for a finished product. Uh, we're gonna start off with our ingredients. First ingredient that we use is, I use soy sauce, and I use about four cups. Now this is not an exact science. Some people could add a little bit more, some people a little bit less, depending on taste of how you like things. Uh, we're gonna be using about a pound of dark brown sugar. Uh, I prefer dark brown sugar over the regular brown sugar. One, for me, I find that it gives it a little more flavorful taste. Uh, we're going to be using some liquid smoke. Uh, I've tried the hickory and just regular, and I kind of lean towards the regular. Um, I use one bottle. And then I season to taste. Now, what I found that works for me and what people like the most from the beef jerky that I make is I use the coarse grind black pepper. Now when I purchase my beef I usually look at the sales and I usually purchase uh, bottom round roast and then what I do is I have the meat cutter put it on their slicer on a number four setting and he cuts it cross grain so when it dries it just tears really nice off you're not pulling a tooth out trying to eat your beef jerky. Uh, it dries really well and uh, I never have an issue uh, having too much beef jerky and, and not being able to get rid of it. Now one recommendation, if you're going to make a lot of beef jerky and you're going to store it, what I would suggest is because of the fat content in the beef, I would not let it set out more than maybe two weeks tops. If you're going to make it last for a while, what I would do is maybe put it in some vacuum bags and I would put it in the freezer and that would keep the fat from getting rancid. You don't want to get sick on something like that. But I've never had a problem. My beef jerky, jerky usually disappears usually within the first week and I usually have so many requests. When people hear that I'm making a batch, they come out of the woodwork. You don't know how many friends you have until you start making beef jerky like that. Now, what we'll do is I'm gonna get set up. We'll cut away for right now. I'll show you the ingredients on how we mix it and uh, we'll go from there. We'll see you in just a second. Okay, I'm gonna be using a big mixing bowl and it's not rocket science. I just use a regular measuring cup. I have my soy sauce that I buy in bulk, cheaper that way. And what I do is I put four cups of soy sauce into my pan here. So we'll pour this out. Okay, there's my four cups of soy sauce. Put the cap back on because I'd hate to spill it. Okay, what I'm going to do is guesstimate and put about a pound of the dark brown sugar in. And like I said, if you add a little bit more, a little less, it's no big deal. You know, at this point I don't even measure anymore. I do a lot of stuff by eye. But if you want to be exact, it's usually about a pound. Okay. 
zip that up and we'll get it out of the way. Take off the uh, soy sauce. It hurts when you don't have fingernails to do this. I mean, this is the liquid smoke, I'm sorry. And then I put the whole bottle of liquid smoke in there. And then let's get that out of the way. Then I'm just going to mix up my whole marinade. You want to make sure that all the sugar is dissolved. So, you know, like I said, it's not an exact science. If you look in there and you see a lot of grains of sugar, we'll add it. A little more soy sauce, it's not going to hurt. So we mix it real good. And then I've already prepped the beef. Um, so I cut it into the strips that I'm gonna use when we start dehydrating. So what I'll do is, we'll break that out of the refrigerator right now. And then we'll start adding it to this marinade. Now what I like to do, is I'll leave it setting in this marinade for about, I wanna say anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. And that seems to work pretty good. Now, that bottom round, I mean, that's pretty awesome. You know, and on the number four setting when that dries, I mean, it's just perfect. I mean, the meat's just marbled just right in the strips. I cut them into nice strips, as you can see. You know, and we just lay them in there. And then I just take my fork, put them under, and then I just keep applying. So what we're going to do is I'm going to finish up putting all this stuff in this marinade. We'll let it sit for a little while. And then when we're ready to break it out and start feeding the trays on the dehydrator, we'll uh, cut back in and I'll show you how I do that and how I apply the pepper and we'll start drying some beef. Okay, so it's been a two hour wait. Now I'm gonna take the beef out of the um, refrigerator where it's been marinating. Uh, we'll set it on the counter. I'm gonna do a couple, boat up a couple trays for you, show you the gist of how we do it and then we'll cut away and then I'll show you the final stack and how I get the machine going and then in nine hours, you know, we'll cut away again and then I'll show you the final result of uh, the fruit of our efforts. So we're going to take it out of the fridge. And it's been in the marinade now for two hours. Now what I like to do is I get a colander, just a regular old colander. I just set it in the sink and then I grab, you know, pretty good amount then I put in my colander and that way I let it drip in the sink and then I rinse it out later and this keeps from getting a lot of marinade dripping down through all your trays and I find that it makes the cleanup a lot easier. So what I do is I just take a regular tray, lay it on something where it's not going to leak all over the countertop, and then I just start taking my beef and I just lay it out on the tray. Now, you know, they recommend that when you boat up your trays that the beef's not overlapping and sitting on each other and that way you get a better dry. Now what I do, you know, there's times where I'll pack it pretty tight and because you got to remember that when you dehydrate this, you know, these strips of beef are going to shrink and it all just depends on how much liquid's in them. Now, 
you know, I do this technique, I make backpacking food, and I've made beef jerky, you know, when I go on some of my trips, and it's just a really neat, economical way to make a really good meal, a real good treat at a pretty affordable price. I mean, you know, the total cost of today's beef jerky, you know, the five pounds of beef and uh, all the ingredients, you know, like I said before, it's anywhere, you know, 25 to 25 to 26 bucks, you know, which is not bad. Okay, so now I have a tray boated up, as you can see. And then I'm just going to take my um, coarse grind black pepper and I just, you know, you just gingerly put the pepper on. You know, you don't want to get too crazy with it, but just enough to give it some flavor, give it a little pop. Now, I've also used red chili on this. You know, the firecracker one that McCormick makes. Um, they got pretty good reviews. But with this coarse ground, black pepper seems to be the rave that, uh, that everybody likes. So that's my first tray boated up. And I have 11 trays. And we just keep doing it for all 11 trays until they're all full. So we'll cut away right here. When it's all boated up, I'll show you how we start the drying process. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay. So I finished packing the trays, putting the beef on there, arranging them. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a good airflow in there. See how I didn't cram them too tight? So you want to make sure that they're not too tight where you can get air going up and down on this. And it's just going to help speed up the drying process. Now, this Nesco food dehydrator originally came with five trays. And then I went online and I ordered six more. So I have a total of 11 trays. Um, I usually use this uh, machine for doing backpacking food. Uh, it saves a ton of money, especially, you know, when you're going out buying Mountain House, you know, and those meals are five to $7 a piece. And I can make usually a meal for probably about a buck 50. So in future videos, I'll probably show you know, where I dehydrate, you know, uh, ground cooked hamburger meat, and uh, I also do vegetables. And I may decide to do a, you know, a video on how I make a backpacker meal uh, so you all can see. Uh, so we're gonna put this on top. Now, like I said, this Nesco that I have, it's what they call the professional food and jerky dehydrator. It has a uh, variable. Uh, temperature control all the way down to 95 degrees and it top ends out at 160 degrees uh, We're gonna do it at 160 degrees and I'm gonna leave it on there like I said for about eight to nine hours So what I'll do is let's get this bad boy going. We'll cut away and in the morning we'll have some jerky and uh, show you what the finished product is Now this is the best part. We just let it sit and do its magic. Okay, it's been eight and a half hours. It's morning time. We're gonna do the big reveal. I'm gonna show you what our beef jerky looks like. Shut the machine off. And show so we're gonna jerky. unplug it, remove the top. All right, here we go. This is what we have. Look at that, beautiful. See how it shrunk really well. Now I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit, cool down, and then I'm gonna put it in bags. And then uh, I'm able to give it out to friends, neighbors, you know. We're gonna sit here and we're gonna have a beef jerky fest. So this is Wingman showing you how we made homemade beef jerky. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I thank you very much for watching.